I haven't really touched on it too much in this series, but Zendict is actually really good at handling large projects with complex injection needs. So far, the use cases I've shown have been simple, requiring only a single context and a single installer. In this video, we're going to look at a more advanced topic called subcontainers or nested containers. The funny thing is, we've actually been using them all along without even knowing it. You see, the scene context, which is required in every scene that uses Zenject, is actually a subcontainer of the project context. The project context is a global context from which all other containers inherit their bindings. This is because bindings are inherited by the children and grandchildren of any given container. Children of the scene context come in many forms. But first, how about a formal definition? A subcontainer is any container that is the child of another container. By default, a subcontainer's bindings are only visible to itself and its children. Subcontainers inherit the bindings of their parents and grandparents, and are typically used to abstract away a related group of dependencies. That last part is important, because it sets the stage for a design pattern that goes hand in hand with subcontainers, called the facade pattern. The facade pattern is a design pattern in which an object, known as the facade, provides a simplified interface for a complex system made up of many inner working parts. Imagine calling customer service, you may need to deal with a support issue, or update your credit card, or just check an invoice. But you always go to the same operator. That operator is the facade, and all of the inner working departments are the complex systems that make up the whole organization. There are a few ways to define a subcontainer. What you're looking at here is the simplest method. In layman's terms, we're creating a binding statement that resolves an instance of the greeter class via a subcontainer that is defined using the method called install greeter. Install greeter defines a binding for greeter, as well as a binding for the string hello world, which is only visible to that subcontainer. Defining subcontainers like this may serve well as an example, but you'd be hard pressed to find something like this in production code. Let's turn to a more practical example so we can examine a more common type of subcontainer. So this is an open-world, exploration and survival, space MMO that I'm working on. Oh, did I mention? It also has crafting. Well, it will eventually. This is just the Alpha, of course. And being an Alpha, it currently only has a single ship. I think I'm going to need to add at least one or two more before I officially announce the beta. But before we go creating an entire squadron, let's analyze what we already have in the scene. So first of all, we have a game object called ship that has a ship component attached to it. Nested beneath this is the ship's model and a canvas that contains a game object with a nameplate component attached to it. Finally, at the top of our scene hierarchy, we of course have our scene context, which already has an installer called game installer attached to it. Let's dive into the code, starting with the ship class. Right off the bat, the inject attribute tells us a lot about this class. Ship depends on an instance of health container, which seems to be a subsystem that's responsible for handling everything related to ship's health. This is made apparent through ship's heal and damage methods, which do nothing more than delegate their own responsibilities to the health controller. Remember the facade pattern? Well, this is basically it. Except, imagine that ship had many public methods, like heal and damage, that merely delegated their responsibilities to a larger set of subsystems, like Health Controller. Health Controller is a plain old c -sharp class, so it doesn't need the inject attribute. We can, however, take a look at its constructor to get an idea about what it does. It looks like Health Controller requires an instance of nameplate, as well as an integer that represents the starting health. Taking a quick look at the heal and damage methods reveals that health is represented and kept track of by a private member variable called current health. Heal and damage also make calls to nameplate.setHealthGage, which presumably updates the UI. If you're keeping tally, that's three dependencies that need to be filled so far. Let's hop on over to the game installer. And there they are. Health controller, 
which is injected into ship, followed by nameplate and a hard-coded integer, which are injected into health controller. Great. Now that we're up to speed, we can start adding more ships, right? Well, let me slow my roll there for a second. We have a little bit of a problem that you may have already caught. Health controller is injected as a singleton, which means that each ship will receive the same instance. And on top of that, nameplate is resolved via a lookup on the hierarchy. Adding another ship to the scene will add another nameplate to the hierarchy, which means that Zenject won't know which one to use. In fact, let's give it a shot so you can see what happens when we do. Boom! Provider returned multiple instances when only one was expected, while resolving type nameplate. Each ship has its own instance of nameplate attached to it. So how the heck are we supposed to perform these bindings? Pfft, come on, you already know. The video has subcontainers in the title for Pete's sake. Let's move all of our ship related bindings to a subcontainer. For clarity, I'm also going to give ship its own installer. Let's call it ship installer. <laughs> no surprise there, right? Now we're going to add it to the ship prefab via the game object context component. This is just like the scene context, except that bindings defined in the installers attached to a game object context will only be visible to other classes in the same context, namely the components nested within. This allows us to define singletons and hierarchy lookup bindings without worrying about any sort of cross-contamination. We can create as many ships as we want and they'll each be injected with their own copies of health container and nameplate. And I'm going to just cut and paste the bindings from game installer. You can think of it like moving these bindings from a larger context that spans the entire scene to a smaller context that spans only a subset of the scene. Now let's create some ships. I'll give each one a different starting health. And there you have it. Now, with all of this in place, I'm going to show you something pretty cool that we can actually do now. Check out this class called Ship Controller. The inject attribute tells us that it expects to be given a list of ship objects. Its onGUI method exposes two buttons that allow us to both damage and heal the ships in this list. So what sort of binding do we need to add in order to fulfill this dependency? It's actually a lot easier than you probably think. All we need to do is add a Zenject binding component to the ship's game object reference, the ship component and set the context to the scene context. And just like that, all of these ships are injected into the ship controller as a list. At this point, you may be wondering, what if I need to generate ships dynamically at runtime? Well, in the next video, we'll be taking a look at Zenject Factories, which allow you to do just that. For $5 on Patreon, you'll get access to all of the code showed off in this video, and you'll be supporting the creation of content just like this. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment telling me what you thought. And for more Unity tutorials just like this one, please subscribe with notifications on. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon, and a special shout out to R-Star and Yakov.